amiodarone, a toxic, toxic medication, but it's very important and can be necessary and life-saving. I'm Dr. Abdul Hadi. I'm a board-certified internal medicine hospitalist, and I have one of the highest scores on the USMLE Step 2 in history, which was 272. And I want to help every medical student, whatever medical exam they are taking, to ace it. Let's talk about amiodarone. When I think about um, the question, I want to be the one who is actually designing the question. So I want you to think like the question designer. They want to test you on a key knowledge point about amiodarone, which is amiodarone toxicity. Particularly in this question, we are talking about the pulmonary toxicity. They will give you a 60-year-old female patient with four weeks history of cough and shortness of breath presented to the hospital for further evaluation. The patient is on amiodarone for months or years and has history of congestive heart failure and she has an ejection fraction of 30%. So they will give you a bunch of information within that question and they want you to differentiate this presentation, whether it's amiodarone toxicity or exacerbation of her heart failure, or is this a pneumonia? So this is exactly the information that they will give you. And from this table, you can differentiate and uh, pinpoint the diagnosis. So cough is present in all of them, but look, phlegm or sputum or productive cough is mostly with pneumonia. In amiodarone toxicity, you have dry cough. Look at the presentation with shortness of breath. In amiodarone toxicity, it's subacute. Look at pneumonia, it is acute, and look at heart failure. The other thing they will mention in the exam is the orthopnea. In this case, they will tell you the patient has no orthopnea. In pneumonia, also no orthopnea. Notice who has orthopnea, congestive heart failure. This table, you can actually take a screenshot and it will help you answer this question with your eyes closed. Crackles on pulmonary examination. You hear diffuse bilateral crackles on amiron toxicity pulmonary toxicity, bibasilar crackles on CHF exacerbation, and with pneumonia, because it's usually we're talking about low bar pneumonia, in the exam, they will give you a low bar pneumonia. They're not gonna tr try to confuse you with a bilateral pneumonia. So they will tell you the patient has crackles on the right side, on the left side, in one zone. But in amiodarone pulmonary toxicity, it is diffuse. And then they will tell you the patient has no leg edema. Leg edema is not present in amiodarone toxicity, not in pneumonia, but it's in CHF. Exacerbation. Fever, also very important. I should have put it first one, actually. Fever, no fever in pulmonary toxicity from amiodarone, no fever in CHF exacerbation, but you expect fever in pneumonia. So these are the variables that they will give you on that uh, particular vignette. And it will match this side of the table, and they are trying to test you if you can differentiate pulmonary toxicity from other common presentation because the management is different. And if you're curious, the management of pulmonary toxicity of amiodarone is that you stop the amiodarone and you treat them with prednisone. Now, I wanna give you a bonus to this video and I want to tell you about amiodarone because it's very important medication and pulmonary toxicity is only one of the adverse effects. So you have to know them. You have to know each and single one of them. Pulmonary toxicity. What else? Hepatic toxicity. Before starting amiodarone, it's always good to have a baseline chest x-ray, a baseline liver function test. What else? It can cause eye abnormalities, like optic neuritis, like corneal deposits. 
it can cause tremor. It can cause thyroid abnormality, whether hypothyroidism most commonly or less commonly hyperthyroidism. If you don't get a question on a neuron on your exam, you can come back to this video and unlike it. Otherwise, please hit the like button, share this video with your friends and follow me. Thank you so much.